Grids with cards are one of the most common layouts we see in websites today. But as we shrink our websites down to mobile responsive views, typically those cards will take up 100% of the width and all stack on top of each other. This works fine, of course, but it does make our pages a whole lot longer and induce a whole lot more scrolling up and down. One way to avoid this is to have some kind of horizontal scrolling for your cards. And thanks to Netflix, people are pretty familiar with finding sections where they need to horizontally scroll. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can set up horizontal scrolling inside of Generate Blocks. This will work great for different kind of card setups, your blog post layouts, or any kind of multi-column layout. It's actually pretty simple to do, requires just two lines of CSS, and as you'll see in this video, takes just a couple minutes to set up. Let's go ahead and get this setup going. We're gonna add a section in here, which is just a container with an inner container. And inside of it, let's go ahead and add a headline. This is going to be for a section we're gonna talk about courses we have. So check out our courses. And underneath it, we'll just have a little bit of website Ipsum here just to fill in a subheadline. I'm gonna go ahead and change this to a generate blocks paragraph. And we're gonna change the max width to 60 CH and we'll give it a margin of auto on the left and on the right and center align it. So that looks pretty good. Uh, under here, we want some good margin beneath this just to space out our grid underneath it. So maybe we'll do 60 pixels just for now. Now inside here, we're gonna go ahead and add a grid. And in this case, I'm gonna use a four column grid and I'm gonna make sure to put 20 pixels of gap in between these elements here. We can go ahead and prepare and do the vertical gap as well. Now, typically what I'll do when I add these grid containers is I will just delete the extra ones. We'll go ahead and style this one up and then we can go back and duplicate these so we don't have to redo the work several times. All right, so we're going to do maybe 24 pixels of padding. We'll give it eight pixels of border radius. We need to give it a background. I'm gonna go ahead and just do a black background for now and we're gonna do an image overlay on here. So I'll just grab this first image, which is a guitar. And we can go ahead and dim this opacity back to about 0.5. Now inside of this container, we're gonna go ahead and add a headline. And since this is an H2, we'll make this an H3 and we'll say guitar courses. Now, obviously black is not gonna work so we can change the color to white. This is a little big for my taste, so I do have some global style set up. We'll just make this the style of our H5. All right, so let's go ahead and duplicate this now four times, and we can replace some of this content. So this one's gonna be bass courses, this one will be drum courses, and this one will be piano courses. And we need to go ahead and replace all the images as well. So here I have an image of a bass, an image of drums, and a piano image. Okay, now all of these are a little bit short and I have some extra margin from these headlines. I should have fixed that originally, but we can go back and just zero these out. And I want to make all these cards a little bit taller and have the text centered at the bottom of the card. So to do that, I'm just gonna go ahead and select all four of these containers. I'm gonna change their display to flex and I'm gonna align the items in the bottom and justify the content in the center. And now when I give this a minimum height, it should place that text at the bottom. So let's do something maybe like 200 pixels tall. So now we can see we have the text here at the bottom of these cards and that's exactly the look I was wanting to go for. Now, because I use the image overlay, sometimes when you do that and then you put text in here, it will actually have this text behind the overlay. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the Z index on all these headlines to two just to make sure to avoid that. All right, so now when we go down to tablet, we see that we still have four here. What I would typically do, and I'm gonna show you kind of how we would typically do this and then how we're gonna change it. What I typically do is probably put these at 50% so they stack up in a two by two grid. And then when we go down to mobile, they automatically go to 100. So this is essentially what we'd have in a typical setup. Now, what we're gonna be doing here is actually changing this to horizontal scrolling, which we're gonna to get to next. But I wanted to kind of show you 
the issue I find with this. Obviously, this is a lot of extra scrolling. You know, there's only four cards in this setup, but you can imagine if there was eight or if there was multiple sections with eight cards, it just becomes a lot of scrolling on mobile. All right, so let's go ahead and save our progress here. And we're gonna go ahead and publish that. We'll go back to desktop here. All right, so now that you have this set up, here's where we're gonna go ahead and start implementing everything we need for the side scrolling. So on the grid block here, I'm gonna go ahead and give this a class so we can target it with some CSS. I'm just gonna call this horizontal scroll for now. I'm gonna go ahead and copy that to my clipboard so I have it. We'll update this and publish it and take a look on the front end. Everything's looking good. We can jump into the customizer and start writing a little bit of CSS. So here under additional CSS, I'm gonna do a period and then that class I added. And we're gonna add just two lines of CSS to this grid block. The first one is gonna be flex wrap and we're gonna do no wrap. Now the next one is gonna be overflow X and it's gonna be auto. So we didn't see anything change here on desktop, but now when we go into tablet, you can see that these aren't taking up the 50% like they were before in wrapping because we've put the no wrap on there. And here on mobile, we're starting to get that scroll bar here. So we're a little bit closer to what we need, but all of these boxes are getting squished. So there's a couple changes we need to make back in the editor. So here back in the editor, I'm gonna select all four of these containers and I'm gonna go down here to the flex child settings. I'm gonna change the grow to one and the shrink to zero. Now, if we go ahead and update this and refresh in the customizer, we'll see here in tablet, now they're taking up the 50% like they were supposed to and we have our scrolling. And here on mobile, they're taking up 100% of their width and the scrolling option is there. Now the problem with this is if you landed on this on a, on a true mobile device here in the customizer during you know using a desktop browser, we're actually seeing a physical scroll bar, but we can use the inspector here to mimic what it's gonna look like actually on a mobile device. And once you deselect that, you really can't see that there's a scroll bar there. So if this is 100% of its available width, no one would know this content is over off to the right. So what we need to do is change the size of these boxes to make it obvious that they're scrolling. So what we'll do is we'll jump back in here into the editor and we're gonna to go to the tablet version first. So we'll have all four of these containers selected and we're gonna go down to the sizing panel. Here instead of 50%, I'm actually gonna do 40%. And on mobile, I'm gonna do 80%. And you'll see once we update this and refresh it here on the front end, we'll see now that these columns are only taking up 80%, we can see the next box coming into view. So now we would know more intuitively that there's more content over here to scroll. Same thing here on the tablet version. Once it's loaded, you can see these two are taking up 40%. This one's also taking up 40%, which is causing it to go off the side. This makes it really intuitive for the user to know that there's something to scroll. We see this so often in UI that most people are gonna know immediately that they're supposed to scroll here. Now, one other little thing I like to do is decrease the gap in between these cards. You can see the gap between the edge of my screen and the edge of the cards are pretty similar. And that can cause some confusion when you get here to the end. It almost looks like this could continue going even though it stops. So if we reduce this gap here, it will be more obvious that this is the end since it has a bigger gap. So we're gonna go back here into the editor and we'll go into tablet. And here on the grid, we're gonna change this instead of 20 pixels, which I had before. Let's change it to eight, and that should trickle down to the mobile as well. We can go ahead and update that and refresh it here. And now you can see we have a bigger gap on this left-hand side than we do in between the cards. So that makes it pretty obvious that we've got to the end. And that's the same here on a phone screen. We can see once we get to the end, there's a bigger gap over here than here. And it's a very subtle thing, but I think it does make a difference for the user experience knowing that they've reached the end of those containers. Now, if we go ahead and open this up in the inspector in the responsive view, you'll see here on our desktop screens, we just have the four columns across. But as we get smaller and smaller and snap to the tablet breakpoint, now we get our side scrolling for these cards. Obviously, since they're taking up 40% of the width, we can see this one card hanging over. 
and we go down to the mobile view where they're taking up 80%, and we can still see these cards overhanging. So just about at every breakpoint, it works pretty well. It might be a little bit wide here for this breakpoint, uh, but there's not many devices coming in at that size. So typically, I will look more at what does a phone look like and what does a tablet look like. And on both of these setups, this looks pretty nice. As I mentioned in the beginning, this technique works really well for cards like we did in this video, but it works really well for query loops as well. So if you wanna show your posts with the horizontal scrolling in between all the cards, you can use the same exact method. Now there are ways inside the Generate Blocks UI that we could have done this without writing code if we would have used flex containers, but unfortunately, once you go to using the query loop block, it automatically adds a grid, so we'd have to go back to this method, which is why I decided to go ahead and do this tutorial just using the grid block, because it's gonna work in more scenarios. If you end up using this technique, I'd love to see what you come up with, so make sure to leave a comment with a URL to where you've used this below. If you like this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up, and there should be a couple videos popping up now with other tricks I've done inside of Generate Blocks. We'll catch you on the next video, or you can come hang out with us inside the admin bar community, which is linked down in the description below.